Working for you. A weekly talk radio program which highlights developments of national interest and the activities of your Sankit Stevens government. Join host Les Roy Williams as he presents news, views, reports, and interviews about everything regarding the activities of the Team Unity government and the building of our communities and the development of Sankit Stevens. Tune in and call in to interact with your government and share your views regarding the upward forward development of your community and our beautiful Twin Island Federation. Working for you is weekly, every Wednesday live from 1.30 p.m. to 3 p.m. on ZIZ Radio, Win FM, and Sugar City FM with rebroadcast on participating stations. Working for you. Good afternoon and we welcome you to Working for You for Wednesday, February 8th. We thank you for tuning in to this program. We thank you for listening and later on we'll invite you to call in, ask your questions, give your suggestions, share your comments. I am Les Roy Williams, your host for Working For You. Today I have with me a special guest and he is His Excellency Ambassador Sidney Osborne, who is chairman of the organizing committee for the week of activities to mark the second anniversary of the government of national unity. But he's also ambassador to CARICOM and OECS commissioner. Ambassador, welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Les Roy. It's good to be here this afternoon. Sure. Okay, so it's the second year around, the government of national unity came to power in a historic victory, a very significant victory, on the 16th of February 2015. Correct. It was the very first time in the history of the Federation that three parties came together to form the government. That is the People's Labour Party, which is headed by the Prime Minister, Dr. the Honorable Timothy Harris. We have the Concerned Citizens Movement out of Nevis. Yeah. And the leader is the Premier, the Honorable Vance Amory. And then we have the People's Action Movement, PAM. And the leader of the People's Action Movement is the Honorable Sean K. Richards. Correct. And so here it is that we are celebrating the second anniversary of the Government of National Unity. And as in any celebration, there is a week of activities that has been planned to commemorate the second anniversary and so today you're going to speak to us as chairman of the organizing committee of the second anniversary what some of these activities are what the public is to expect about these um, activities and a sort of a rationale behind um, some of these activities. So, let me start the ball rolling, Ambassador. Why a second anniversary celebration? Why? I mean, we, we, we had the first one already. Is this going to be something that you're going to have for the five-year term of the government? That every year there will be a celebration? Well, I expect every year there will be a celebration. I don't know that each year it will be as extensive as this particular one is. I think the reason why we are looking at the second, um, <coughs> second year is simply because the first year there was a lot of things which needed to be done in terms of getting information. Because after all, we only formed the government 
on uh, the 15th, sorry, <coughs> the 16th of um, February. And so there's a lot that we didn't know that was going on as far as the government is concerned. So you had to take some time in terms of getting a feel for what is happening, putting certain policies and plans in place and programs. And so the first anniversary was in a way low keyed as opposed to this one. But we feel in terms of what has happened, the commitments we made to the people and what has happened over the two year period that it's really a time for us to celebrate and let people know exactly what has been accomplished in the two year period. I'm sure if people are gonna be honest with themselves and look closely at what has happened over the, the two years, they will be satisfied that a lot has been done. And I think as the Prime Minister has said, and I think um, other persons have said, we have done so much in two years that defies the understanding of some people. And so we figured that this was a good time to come out and celebrate with our people in both St. Kitts and Nevis. So it's not something just St. Kitts alone, it's the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis, so that our activities span both islands, St. Kitts and Nevis. We want to get the person's understanding and appreciating that we are one people. By accident, maybe some of us were born in St. Kitts and some of us were born in Nevis. But as far as everyone should be concerned, we are one people divided by the strip of water, St. Kitts and Nevis. And so that is the reason for this particular celebration, covering both islands to ensure that both the people in St. Kitts and Nevis appreciate and understand that we are one people. Okay. Maybe an accident of where we are born, one in St. Kitts and another in Nevis. But we are one people, one federation. And so basically what I hear you saying is that the week of activities to commemorate the second anniversary is basically a celebration of the accomplishments thus far of the government of national unity. Yes. The, ac the accomplishments, <coughs> yeah. you know, those that are, you know, the tangible accomplishments, of course, yeah. um, and the intangible too, because there are some things that are in the pipeline and so on in terms of making policies and so on, um, laws and so on that have not come um, on stream as yet. Yeah, that is right. If you, if you, as we go through the program, you will recognize and people will realize that there are some activities which are things which we are doing for the first time. There are some activities which lead into the third year and would have a very serious impact on persons in the community. Not only our young people, because there's a program which we're moving into in terms of our training of our young people, empowering our young people. And there's also a program in terms of persons, young people also, but adults, in terms of uh, the housing solution that we uh, want to introduce here in St. Kitts and Nevis. So mm -hmm. those are some of the, the two of the new, new things I can say, which will be done during this particular one week celebration. Sure. Okay, well let's start the ball rolling in terms of telling us what basically is on the agenda for the week of activities that has been planned. Yeah, I just want to say, um, Les Roy, that I've done this already with you where we went through the program, but one understands or should understand that in any set of activities you want to have, it can be a work in progress. And so there are some revisions which will take place over a period as you think about it, as you consult, as you discuss. And so I'm here this afternoon because I think we now have the final uh, program for this week of activities. And there's just some differences from what I spoke about uh, the last time I was here. So that is one of the reasons I'm happy to have the opportunity to be here on this particular program to speak to the people. And we're happy to have you. Yeah, we begin on Sunday the 12th. So that's Sunday coming. And I know you will appreciate in anything you do, always put God first. And so we are having a church service. We are going to church. We are going to the Co-Cathedral Market at Conception. 
everybody knows that as the Catholic Church yes for service in the morning we are joining the church for their morning worship and that's at 8 30 so we're inviting persons here in St. Kitts to come to the Catholic Church on Sunday morning and so that we can participate in their service I understand one of the things I understand which I, I, I didn't realize this was gonna happen is that the youth in the Catholic Church they are responsible for the service on Sunday oh so, so it I will be a youth mass so yes um, so that makes it even more important should be for extremely us to show the link between uh, the government and the young people in the church well I expect it should be lively because once we have young people as I understand it and as I know from the church I go to that the young people's service is really a little different it's more upbeat and so on with choruses and things like that so I expect that we should have a wonderful time so sure. you know you know I'm I'm, I'm I'm Catholic I know that yes. and I am an extremely proud Catholic happy to be a Catholic but I do know that there is a sort of a stereotype of the Catholic Church as being very sort of dead and solemn and that sort of a thing but over the years the church has you know changed some of its um, forms of worship and now you're hearing a lot of uh, praise and worship songs and so yeah. on in the church mm -hmm. and so on because the church has to really cater to the modern times and as you correctly said to the very to the young people it has to cater to the young people and you know their form of worship it has to be attractive to them and so on and so over the years there has been a sort of a dyna dynamism in yeah. the church a sort of a um, charismatic renewal in the church and that sort of attracts the young people and so on so as you correctly said we can look forward to a very lively service on, I expect so. On, on Sunday. I know what, you know, we, what has happened in the past, um, the so-called established churches have stuck with the format that they had um, way back 50, 60, 100 years ago. Yes. And I think all of us must recognize that we are moving on in terms of age and therefore you must find a way to bring the young people into, into the church. Mm -hmm. And I must say that um, in, in the church I attend, which I'm a Moravian, I go to Zion Moravian, we have over the last, I would say, 15, 20, 15 years, changed our service. So that what I found in, interesting is that when people come to Moravian, where they have been there for <laughs> years, they say they can't believe this is Moravian. Um, you know, it's so lively. We sing a lot of praise and worship team, um, the the messages usually one which is dynamic, um, what which deals with the times in which we live in, and so one would expect that you know the older folks would um, take some time to get involved and acclimatize themselves to that. But certainly, I think this is the way one has to look at church in, in terms of if you want to get the young people because they are really the future and if the church is to survive obviously you must find a way to um, involve the young people so that is that's that's right you know you know the Christianity was um, brought to us by the Europeans and so that's on right, yeah. <coughs> and at one point you know for example the Catholic Church the the Anglican Church and so on the church was very um, Eurocentric in its in its in its form of worship and yeah. so on and you know you had the organ basically you had the piano and so on to speak of drums in the church and even steel pan and so on was really unheard of in fact some people thought that when you beat the drums in the church you were bringing the devil into the church that's right you know and things like that so I think now the church cannot be frozen in time that it really has to adapt itself to the modern society. Not necessarily that it's going to be so affected by um, secularization. Yeah, okay. You know, but um, to adapt to the change in times and so on, especially in its liturgy, in various forms of worship and so on, if it's really to, to, to you know, not be a sort of um, aquanism, uh, aquanistic. Okay. What, what I would say, what I found with liturgies is that 
they kind of get ritualistic. I mean, you could just mouth the words and they don't mean anything to you because if you had said the same prayer year after year, you, you, you know the prayer, but you know, you're just mouthing the words and so on. So in our case uh, at Maribu, we don't do a lot of liturgies. We do that in terms of if you're dealing with uh, the Lord's Supper. Sure. Um, you're dealing with certain things like Easter and so on, but sure. to have a liturgy every single Sunday, we don't do that. And yeah. One thing is it's more e effective if you have persons who pray and really pray with feeling and mm -hmm. it comes from their heart. And you know, there's a sense of belief in what, in what they're saying. And so that is the way that... Uh, we yeah, but we've always had that sort of a thing, the spontaneous prayer, yeah, right. of course, and you have the more traditional prayers. Um, for example, the Our Father that we say. Oh, it's a very, it's it's a very say thing. Yeah, right. It's a very traditional, right. you know, but some people have a problem with prayers that are, are written. And some people say, oh, your prayers must not be written. You should just say them from your heart. Now, if it's written, it doesn't mean that you're not saying it from that your heart. That is true, right, right. And so on. But the whole idea that um, you mentioned that the week of activity is begin on Sunday, with a church service, yeah, Sunday coming, the and yeah. that really speaks to, as you correctly said, the the praise and the thanksgiving to Almighty God for um, all that that have been accomplished over the two years, and ask seek for guidance as far as the continuing to the third year. That is and correct. That's what uh, that's what it's all about. And we are a Christian society. Yes. And our religion basically plays an important part in terms of who we are um, as a people. It is what has really shaped us in terms of a moral society um, and what is acceptable and not acceptable, um, formed our consciences and that sort of thing. Yeah. Yes, I, I agree with you. But And we continue Sunday in that vein, in terms of um, Christian vein, religious, because the evening <coughs> we have our uh, Team Unity, I Believe, Gospel Concert. That's what it is. Team mm -hmm. Unity, I Believe, Gospel Concert. And that's going to be held at Greenlands Park. And as I said before, Greenlands Park is where it all started back in September 2014. 2014? Well, the years are going so fast. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. It, it, would, it would have been uh, it's 2013. 2013, in September, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, when we launch this team unity and uh, so we go back to Greenlands Park and there's a gospel concert we have in there as I said team unity I believe gospel concert so is it kind of hallowed ground at uh, Greenlands Park is hallowed ground would you say it is hallowed ground in the sense that that is where in some sense the the, the movement actually started um, in terms of people congregating together yeah, that was and concern. recognizing that they have come together with this, um, you know, the, 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 this, 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 this need for change and, and so on. So in some ways, Greenland holds Signifies a lot of significance right, uh -huh, for us. Mm -hmm. So that's why we figured if we in, in beginning what we're doing, we should go back to, if you want to say, our roots with respect to um, that, that particular venue. It's going to be a very interesting, impactful, and I expect a gospel-filled night. We have quite a number of local artists who are going to be on that show, and we also have an international artist. And I think I saw some information you wrote up about him, um, Les Roy, and that is Jonathan Nelson. Yes. He is um, our international artist. He's from the United States of America. Right. I don't know if, if ZIZ here has the music. I think they have the music. The, and the, I music, think the music which hits everybody is the song he has, I Believe. I Believe. That, and, and somehow we are going to to play some of his music okay. a little later in this show. Oh, okay, fine. Mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. now, the important thing about this Sunday night so I really want to emphasize this today, is that it is St. Kitts and Nevis celebration. This show happens to be in St. Kitts, but it is a St. Kitts and Nevis celebration. So what we have 
moved to now towards is to have people come over from Nevis to send kids for the show. Let me emphasize everything we're doing this week is free. So if you're coming for the show from Nevis, because it'll be a special charter from Nevis to St. Kitts, free. The following night, we're going to travel from St. Kitts to Nevis, it is free. In other words, we want our people to feel that they're part of what is happening. So we are, I, I've spoken with the captain of the Carib Queen, and so we will be using the Carib Queen on that particular evening to bring persons across from Nevis and then we will take them back certainly after the show but that is something free and so I want people to know that I want the word to go out in Nevis and it will because we're doing our ads I think one the audio ad I listened to it today it's already completed but we're also doing a video ad and that should be ready for tomorrow so you'll be able to deal with this in terms of seeing in terms of hearing on the radio and viewing on, on the television. You know, I, I, I basically do not believe, Ambassador, that anything is free. Everything has a cost. But I think the government that what we should say is that the government <laughs> will bear the cost. Yes. Because bringing the people together, bridging the divide between St. Kitts and Nevis is so important that you want to bring people together. And a celebration like this as well, the second anniversary, um, you want as many people as possible to be included. That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that's the important thing where, where this whole show is concerned. So I want really to, once you get the, the ads out, and uh, look, let me tell you this, that <laughs> this information has been on Facebook even before we have indicated who yeah, this is somewhere but somebody got a wind of it. I don't know how they did because I really didn't, didn't right. speak to anybody ahead of time. But it's been out there and also for the Friday night. That was even out, out in the on Facebook and so on, even before Jonathan Nelson. Well, this guy's a were saying, saying, you know, that um, we are having these persons here for. And, and he's a shows. pretty young guy, too. I think he's, he's only 42 years old. He's 42 old. years old, yes. And um, in a biography, um, written about him, they said that he was raised in the church. Yes, I saw that. And a lot of these singers. And his father was, was a pastor. Was a pastor, right? And his mother, I don't know. Served as first lady. Yeah, right. And, and his relatives were all musicians. That's correct. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. And all of this um, led to this, this, this. The budding artist went to study music at the yeah. school for arts and so on, where he studied choir. Yeah, he, he studied right. choir. Yeah. And then later on, he got some um, he got some big position as an executive with a computer software company, but almost lost everything in the 2001 um, dot com collapse. collapse yeah. It yeah, was right. then basically that his life turned around, yeah. and that he realized that you know he should have this dependence on God and yeah. all of that sort of a thing. So basically, you're talking about a man who all his life has been in contact with the church and with God yeah. and so on. So it is not just somebody who I, I feel is just singing for the sake of singing or, you know, to make money. But it seems that there has been some, some, some conversion. Certainly, and I, I, I looked at a video clip when he was in Antigua and certainly the, the young people were there in their large numbers and you could see in terms of their reaction that they were enjoying the music they were enjoying the lyrics and i expect here on sunday night that not only the young people will be there in their numbers but the older persons sure and one of the things we're doing is that we're going to have chairs there so the old, older persons will have the opportunity to sit and enjoy enjoy the show so okay. apart from Jonathan Nelson as I said the number of local artists there is a band of love I think it is the the gospel band radical the, praise radical praise uh, gospel band Tahila well, ta -ta Tahila is a Tahila band as well I am not aware of that uh, mm -hmm. there is an African yes choir. an Ali D Right, Ali D is also there. And Orville Liddy. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I, I, this name might not have been mentioned before, but you know the I know him as Calypsonian uh, Kinta. <laughs> but I understand I he's undefeated as a gospel gospel king. Oh. He's undefeated. Five years. <laughs> Five years. So he's he going to be on the show. So he will be he'll be on the show. Mm -hmm. Right. And also if you recall during all these activities we had as Team Unity, we had a Team Unity choir. So it will also be, be on, the, on, on the show. Are you part of that choir, no, Ambassador? Not, no. Okay. No, I didn't have You're it. not a singer? <laughs> I am. I could sing. Okay. But when that was being done, remember I had some other duties to perform. Sure. Okay. And so I really didn't have the, the time and so on to devote mm -hmm. to something like that. And if I do something, I like to do it to the best of my ability. Sure. Not, not otherwise. So that is um that is Sunday. On Monday, which is February the 13th, there's a cabinet retreat, and that's going to be in Nevis at the Four Seasons Resort. Mm -hmm. Now it's cabinet, so that information in terms of what the retreat will be all about, I'm not privy to that, and none of us will be privy to sure. that, because that's a cabinet matter. Sure. So they're going to be in Nevis for their, for their retreat. In the evening, we have public forum number four, mm -hmm. our town hall meeting number four, sure. fourth in the series. And that's going to be at the St. Paul's Anglican Church Hall in Nevis. Again, let's it's a St. Kitts and Nevis affair. So we also going to lay on the boat, again the Carib Queen, which will take persons over from St. Kitts to Nevis to be part of that. Sure. Public forum or the town hall. So we, you know, we, we have the being together right. as, a, as a people, petitions and divisions. So that is on the Monday that that's going to be the position. The Tuesday, February the 14th, which everybody remembers is Valentine's Day. We are going to have government ministers and the government officials who will journey to the various schools and institutions in St. Kitts and also in Nevis in the morning. Right. So they have an opportunity to visit and just interact. I, I don't, they wouldn't be that they have a form or a thing where they have to bring students together and have, uh, speak to them. It's that they, they move around and, you know, just speak to persons and so on and persons can see them and can interact with them. So that's in the morning. But also in the morning, the three of our ministers are going to be on a, Win FM for their voices program, which is at 11 o'clock, and there will be the Honorable Timothy Harris, Dr. Timothy Harris, Prime Minister, the Prime Minister, the Honorable Mark Brantley, Deputy Premier in Nevis and Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs and Aviation, and we also have the Honorable Ian Patches Liber. Well, he has a whole list of things which I wouldn't <laughs> attempt. To, to begin to well, say, he, and I basically he is, he is public minister of public infrastructure, public infrastructure, etc. Transport, good, you know, and and posts. Okay, all right. Yeah, transport and posts. Those right. those are his. Well, those are his portfolios. Open, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that that that's um, on on Win FM, and then in the afternoon, there is one on one consultations um, in the constituencies. Whether it is that um, representatives will move around the constituency or have persons come to an office they have there, that will be determined by them. But in other words, then we are going to be in the constituency and have one-on-one -on -one cons consultations. Sure. And then in the evening, there is a Premier's reception, which is in Nevis. I'm not, I, I don't want to say the venue because I am not too sure that I, I recall where the venue is. I have a well, idea where it is, but I, I, don't, I don't want to say it. And that's uh, from 7 to 9. When I spoke with the Premier Amory last week, I said, um, so how are you going to about, go about it? He said, anybody wants to come, will come. Mm -hmm. And I think I want to stress that we are talking about bringing people together. And it has nothing to do with NRP, CCM, PAM, PLP, or I'm missing one, NRPCCM, PLP, PAM. 
Right, you have nothing. I have it, yeah. It has yes, nothing yes, to yes, do yes, with that. Mm -hmm. Or even labor. Let me use uh, it. Yes, yes, you are missing labor because I'm missing that. Mm -hmm. yeah. It is something about our people coming together. It has nothing to do with your political affiliation. It has to do with your petition or your division and that we want to come together and just mingle. I mean, we have friends in all the various political parties. This is not a, a political party matter. So I expect persons from the Labour Party to be a part of what's going to happen in Nevis if they're scared to go across. Mm -hmm. People from NRP to be a part of it because it's open to everybody. So it's the Premier's um, reception and that's the evening of Tuesday the 14th. Yeah. So that's a wonderful Valentine's night for persons over in Nevis. <laughs> mm -hmm. On Wednesday, the 15th, I spoke about this, the launch of the additional apps, e-government, and that's going to be at Ocean Terracing, yes. and that's at 10 o'clock in the morning. I think we went through the, the, the apps and uh, apps. But we did not give a venue. But we didn't give a venue, so that, that's uh, where a the venue, venue and is. the time. Maybe. Yes, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we go to working for you. Well, I'm here this afternoon, and yes. So next week you have a guest, the Prime Minister, the Deputy Prime Minister, and the Premier Senior Minister, and that's right here, as you know. And they are the leaders of the and they're tri the leaders of the three parties. So that's yeah. why we have had them. We, we brought them there. So that's it. And then we have public forum number five, the fifth one, and that is at Challengers Community Centre. That's the heart of constituency number four. Okay, so we were there on Wednesday night. <coughs> Ambassador, before yeah. we go forward, mm -hmm. um, the public forums, Yes. the first set of public forums that we, we had were dubbed Discussions for prosperity. Yeah. This time around, there have been some additional words that have been added. That is correct. It's longer. So it is now good governance accountability. and accountability for, for prosperity. prosperity. Yeah. What brought about that change in the theme? Well, obviously, Les Roy, and to those who are viewing and listening, we have from the very beginning of our the formation, and as we went around the islands, both St. Kitts and Nevis, we have pushed this whole idea of good governance. When we looked at polls, for instance, and when we listened to our citizens, they were of the view that one needs to deal with this matter of how are you governing? How people look at a government? How people view um, individuals in, in, in government? And we figured that since our view was that we want to transform, that was it, transform our people transform the country, then one of the aspects of that would have to be that we understand what good governance is all about. I think those two words say it all in terms of what we're talking about. But in order to deal with um, good governance, then there must be transparency in what you do. And so people must see that whatever is done by government, by ministers, they are transparent in, in what they're doing. Yes, There's uh, nothing hidden and so on. It is out there and it can be viewed. Now, I would say that, and this is a mistake that sometimes happens with, in, in politics, that the only perfect person that I am aware of was Jesus Christ. I don't have anybody else, but if somebody knows of somebody else, they could let me know. There is none. And so all of us must make a mistake. If you say you do nothing, you could still make a mistake, and maybe the mistake is doing nothing. So, you make a mistake, acknowledge you make a mistake, all right? 
if you want to say you know you're sorry you apologize whatever it is and move on but don't try to dance around any mistake people will see to that you made yes. a mistake come out to the people whether you're a politician whether you're an individual in the country and you have your friends whatever it is and say hey look i messed up i'm sorry and so i want you to move on you know ambassador that is easier said than done you know it takes a lot of humility to be able to acknowledge one's mistake to say that one is sorry and to make amends it takes humility to do that and sometimes basically let's face it power when people hold power political power or whatever type of power sometimes it is an invitation it is very inviting to become haughty and to become extremely proud and so therefore saying that one is sorry especially to the very people who elected you and so on sometimes one might think that you are being weak that you were let down but it's the total opposite people want truth People want transparency. People want accountability. And so on. Otherwise, you know, you have to really question this thing about good governance. Now, I was doing some research myself about good governance, and there are so many things that are said about good governance. But some of the key words in good governance are, for example, transparency. Which you yeah. hear all along. What does that really mean? You know, water is you know transparent. If it's if it's not muddy yeah. and and murky and so on, you can really see through it. And then you have accountability. What does actually accountability so actually part mean? Part of our theme this this time. Around. That is correct. And then you have the whole thing of um, participation, a participatory government, in which people can participate you know, in terms of what is happening in their own country and feel a sense of inclusion. And then you have the whole thing about equity. It's a word that's been banded about and so on. And people say equality and equity are not the same thing. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, and I saw a, a demonstration some time ago where you had a little child and you had, you know, a teenager and then you had an adult. And basically, you have all of them on the same level, and you're asking them to look over a fence. Now, they may say, well, that is equality. But then, equity, you put one of them on a box, and you put another one on a little higher box, and so on, and everybody is equal at the top, so everybody can see over the fence. That's right. <laughs> so that, that is equity. Yeah. And then, good governance must be consensus-oriented. I, I saw that too, you know, and the whole thing about direction, a government must have direction, hmm? there must be stakeholder engagement, there must be performance management, and I do not think somehow that in the civil service that has been stressed enough, performance management, I mean, we talked about it the last time, that you have people in the civil service, in the public sector, and so on, who are basically not doing any work. And nobody manages that. But I hear this government talking about performance appraisal and, and paying people, uh, rewarding people for the work that they do, and, and so on, which is an incentive for people to really, um, for people to work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you use uh, some words um, about power, and honestly, I've, I've always tried to refrain from using the word power, the government that's in power. Okay. Um, I, I tell you why. Um, I like what Christ said. He came to serve. Great teacher, but he came to serve. That's correct. And so, to my mind, and if we're talking just at the political level, people who offer themselves for 
to represent um, different constituencies, different people. I think it's more that they must see themselves as servants of the people. Yes. And so I like to use the word that people serve, and I also rather to use the word commitment than promises. Yes, yes, yes. Because when you hold up the manifesto which we which we did, or when you go on the internet and you, you look at the, the what's in the manifesto, we are saying that is our commitment to the people, not promises. Yes. And so we can tick off one by one as we do them. This is what we committed to do and we have done it. So sure. commitment, it's made and we move on. We said sometimes promises kept, but I think I said somewhere promises are like pie crust. As far as I am I'm told, <laughs> easily broken. Yes, and, and there's so a saying, people say a promise is a comfort to a fool. Mm -hmm. Right, so <laughs> I, I rather use the word commitment and say that we have made our commitment in terms of our manifesto to over 50 sure. of, of things of the things found in our manifesto. Okay, That's what we're saying. and Ambassador talking about that we are going to take a little break, Okay. but in that break we are going to listen to a song from Jonathan Nelson. Nelson. You are 
<laughs> that was Jonathan Nelson, I believe. And he will be coming to St. Kitts for the gospel extravaganza right. called the I Believe Unity Gospel. Team Unity, I Believe Gospel Concert. Gospel Concert. And you understand the I Believe when you listen to the song. That is correct. correct. Okay. okay. And so we'll move on with the, yeah. on the rest of Thursday, the 16th of February. And I've, I'm sure everybody knows that is a significant de date, the 16th. Because that's when they, we had elections and yes. there was a change. 16 is also a member of everyone, except that was January the 16th, 2015. Uh, we recall what happened in our parliament mm -hmm. then. And certainly one of the things that we have done as Team Unity in terms of our speakers in terms of our persons who represent the people um, in terms of team unity we understand that there must be decorum in parliament we are supposed to be leaders of the country and there are young people who will be looking at us as leaders and certainly you want people to emulate in the good habits that people present to them and certainly parliament is a place where we need to be courteous, we need to respect one another, we need to remember what the rules are, and really that we have proper decorum in Parliament. So there is a Parliament um, on the Thursday, 10 o'clock at Government Headquarters, the um, as National Assembly will be meeting. And then we have an important launch in the afternoon at 4.30 where we're going to be launching the Skills Training and Empowerment Program, STEP, as the acronym is, and that will be at the Circus at 4.30. So at the Circus, we are going to have quite a number of young people from our gather who are going to be there in terms of as we move from PEP to STEP, where we're going to be working on skills, yes. people developing skills, people being trained, and certainly if you have a skill, then you can be empowered and you do things for yourself. I think that's the important thing about the Team Unity government, the Team Unity administration, that we, rec we recommend and we recognize that people must do things for themselves, become entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. all right? They open their own door, they close their own door, and they have their own business. And this is a way in which you want to, to move the country we have into free enterprise as far as the government is concerned. Certainly there are social issues that sure. one has to deal with. And the, the areas are in terms of social social um, areas that we have to deal with. But I, I think one of the things with the reformation of the PEP program, because it is my understanding that the PEP program was supposed to be a training program or it is a training program. Nonetheless, there was not much training that basically took place on that program. It was supposed to be a short-term program where people were trained and then they move on to other areas that they were trained in to, to get um, permanent employment or to get involved in their own business. Their own business correct, yeah. And some assessment was done from what I understand, and that was not really happening. So the reformation in the in the program is really to make the program more um, what it was really meant to be. A program where people can get real training, a program where people can be really empowered, where they can get real skills to be able to help themselves. Yes, apart from that also, the, the program, I'm sure, will look at what are uh, the requirements in terms of job opportunities in St. Kitts. I yes. mean, here we are speaking about steel bending and we have to bring people in. So I expect that this program will, will it look will at the needs and so on. The needs and, of and the and labor then, market. Uh, yes, and then yeah. uh, uh, put, uh, train people in, in those areas where we are deficient so that our own people can really 
get the jobs, those type of jobs, mm -hmm. and not have to bring somebody in from overseas. Not against persons coming right. from overseas, but I think we need to ensure that our people, once they're trained, that they have the opportunity. And that's one of the reasons why, it, you recall, we had visited the Park Hyatt some Saturdays ago. Sure. And really what was a very interesting development there is that the emphasis is on using locally trained persons. And they actually have been involved in mm -hmm. training programs mm -hmm. themselves at the college. So that is that is the way this I expect this step program will go. Persons will hear a lot more about it. I'm not privy to all of the, the information as far well, as Mr. Concerned. D'Souza will Mr. D'Souza will be unveiling exactly how this program will well, it's different from what I had before, so I don't have to say that. Mm -hmm. But he will uh, he will give the details as to how we move forward with STEP. Sure. Okay. Um, go ahead. The see. Friday, which is the 17th. <coughs> we are saying on Friday the 17th, we have quite a number of activities. Um, one is groundbreaking. But before that, we are saying that let's consider Friday as a celebration of the government of National Unity Day. And so we're encouraging people to wear white. Okay. So on the Friday, when you go to work, whatever you do, the alignment or whatever, we're encouraging people to wear white as a sign of unity. I know you are being in church, you say white is purity also, so <laughs> it's purity. Yeah, some people say it's purity, it's, it's virginity, it's all of those things but when just, you're unsolid. I will just check at <laughs> purity and unity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. Then at 9.30 that morning, Friday morning at the 17th, mm -hmm. we have the housing ground breaking ceremony in St. Kitts and in Nevis, but in St. Kitts, I'm sure if you live in constituency one, you're going to be happy because that is where the groundbreaking ceremony will be done as we move into Teen Unity's Housing Solutions program. And so we're going to be breaking ground at Corner House. If you recall, there is a building which was demolished in that area. You know, those apartments you have. Uh, going up the, the road there, Wellington mm -hmm. Road. Yes, yes. So we will be breaking ground there. So for a short while we'll have to close off the road because sure. we're going to put a stage there and really have a very important ceremony. And we have some tents on. going back. Yeah, we have, yeah. A t well, we have a tent on the stage. Of course, sure. we'll just be there, you know, um, standing and listening. And that is the start of what we expect to be a revolution in terms of how we can deal with housing. Some people, they're listening to the town hall meeting, can't remember if there's anyone in, no, he didn't speak in mind, so he had to be the one in, in Keon, the minister Hamilton, spoke about not just two bedroom houses, he spoke about the bedrooms being larger, but he also spoke to the issue of persons, maybe six persons in a household, how do you get six persons in a household in a two-bedroom house? So there is flexibility in terms of um, two-bedroom or three-bedroom houses. So all the way breaking ground in Newtown, um, in constituency one, then there will be housing programs, housing development going on in all of the sure. constituencies. So I don't want people to think that, oh, it means everything will happen in one and then what next? One, two, right through the eight, consecutively, there will be the housing program being developed in all of our constituencies. Similarly, mm -hmm. the same thing in Nevis will be done. Then we, we introduce something uh, uh, for our senior citizens. Those seniors who are able to move around, we want to give them a, we call it a south-north tour. I've been speaking to Mrs. Ann Wigley on this matter, mm -hmm. and she's actually actively working on it. And so we want to take a group of seniors from all of the constituencies and take them on a tour. And so we want to start on the Southeast Peninsula. That's where we begin. Uh, we see whether or not there's, you know, some of the developments that can even just go in and have a bird's eye view sure. of, of what is happening there. 
and we bring them back into Bastia, they can go on Port Zante. Anyway, we, they will develop the, 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 we, we don't want to, to stop and, and take the persons. And we're looking at somewhere in the north that we will end, end the tour so that they'll have a day from about 10 in the morning and by 2 o'clock they should have complete. So that is for senior citizens who don't have the opportunity to move around. I think it will be a treat for them that they can see exactly what is happening in the country. I'm sure some of them will call up the relatives overseas mm -hmm. and so on and tell them, you know, I went on this tour. Yeah. Imagine what I saw there and, you know, things like that. So we want to do that for what our seniors. that really speak to, though, in terms of the philosophy of the government? Right, the philosophy of the government, I mean, it's simple as far as I'm concerned. We are there for all of the people and needs that people have. We are there to deal with them. You would have recalled that the town hall meeting, I, I don't remember, there, there's now the three gone already, so I, I mm -hmm. can't remember mm -hmm. which one. But um, Minister Leibold spoke about a lifetime um, tariff for persons yes. who can't afford to pay electricity bill. In other words, we're saying you want to done away with candles and lamps and so on. And so a lifeline, sorry, not time, a lifeline life right. uh, tariff. And that was something actually that Pam spoke about many years ago in terms of um, for persons who may be living in one a one room house or two rooms so that at least they can have electricity. I know that some people might want to see how they could cheat <laughs> but that, it doesn't work that way. I mean, there are safeguards which are put in there as far as that is concerned. So I'm saying then that the government, government recognizes that you have to deal with people young. So we have our preschool and the older ones where we take care of our elderly and those who cannot really fend for themselves. And that is why we have the home care as far as that is concerned. And then the night we have the youth explosion 2017. Did you miss something though? I missed, oh sorry, yes. <coughs> the distribution of the 50 plus magazine. I think I related, I said something about that. You before. said earlier. Yeah, but so that magazine will be distributed in St. Kitts and Nevis. Um, that's around midday. What we say we do, we will have a, a table um, outside Team Unity headquarters on Fourth Street. We'll have a table also down in the area of government headquarters. We also have a number of persons who will be distributing the magazine. So that is how, in terms of saying, okay. it's how we get that magazine out. I've had a look at it and there's quite a lot of information. And as I said, I think before, um, there's some things there which people haven't realized that happen. All right? Because some people just look at bread and butter issues, the vat and things like that. But there are a lot of other issues which we have done, which all form part of the good governance agenda. Yeah. And people need to see Team Unity as really transforming what we do here in St. Kitts and Nevis. Hence, they'll find some of those things inside there. Then as I said, then the youth explosion is at Newtown Playing Field. And for this one, we have Dexter Daps. You were saying about Dexter Daps. Yeah, he's, he's basically a Jamaican. He's Jamaican, yeah. Um, more dance hall yeah, type artist. kind of artist. Yeah who was born Louis Anthony Grandison. Okay. He was born in Sevier Gardens in Jamaica, in, Jamaica, in, in, in you know, in Kingston. Mm -hmm. And a young guy as well, he's only in his early 30s, yeah, right. either 31 or 32. Mm -hmm. And he has a number of songs like Save Me Ja, May You Be, Jealous Over, and 7-Eleven and so on. Oh, you the know young those songs? People, you know those songs? Not really, but <laughs> <laughs> but we will get um uh, we'll get Ronnie Rascal oh, well, you know those, man, there, you know, to I give see, us one or I see two. Of them. Smiling, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh -huh. And then after that, we are going to go to the phone lines. Maybe there are people who have one or two questions, and then we'll wrap up at three. Just one other thing, uh, okay. if I just finish this, if I may, because sure. just one other thing to speak about, and that's the Saturday, the February the eighteenth. And mm -hmm. this is a political event. Everything I've spoken about before is government. There's a Team Unity breakfast 
uh, west of the old treasury building at six. Sure. So that is a teen unity function and a government function. And then in the evening, we have the Prime Minister's reception. And the Governor General has kindly consented to allow the Prime Minister to use the grounds at Government place. House. And so there's a Prime Minister's reception at Government House. I don't know if you're up there, I'm sure you were for independence. And so we expect uh, plenty of people. <laughs> Could be nearly 3,000 people. But the okay. point is, um, we want people to come. Is this the case of the more the merrier? <laughs> well, in a way, because it means that they're coming to, because they feel the need to be a part of what has happened yes. over the last two years. And the final okay. thing is that on Wednesday, March the 8th, there is a public lecture, and the topic is good governance. Um, the venue, and venue will be announced later, and also the lecturer. So that is outside of, of the week, um, but it will be Wednesday, the 8th of March. So that gives you Leroy, the program that we have for the week of Edmonton. Okay, when we come back, we'll have some oh, wait, songs. Wait, wait, and just, oh, did sorry. You? It's important. The youth explosion. Again, people from Nevis. Yes. The boat will be, be, will be on. Bringing people down. Bringing people down. That. Again, they um, carry, what's it? Uh, Queen, the Caribbean okay. Queen. Okay. Yeah. So all all three events are used in the Caribbean Queen. So, so those times will be announced. And, and so times on and, and so on. Yeah. So, perfect so I just want to make sure that Nobody in Nevis thinks they're left out. All part of it. Okay. Maybe next year we'll, we'll uh, whenever we do another something like this, one of the functions will be in Nevis. I think we, we need to look at it sure. that way too. Yeah. Let's play something for the young people. Okay. Do I write it? I think I'm in that category, you know, um, ambassador. Would you say you are? <laughs> I'm not fooling myself. <laughs> In the summer room when you come back You make me flow like a balloon into the sky You see me made I miss you, you and I I'll be so good at him off the honor Any girl who say they meet you, they might just have fun Me look up the definition of the baddest on a yuck Cause anywhere you go, every I hit there, you have to follow you But see so good, me wish me about 21 a yuck Oh, I can't style your body, my go take one and go And me have a show, but me should have fallen for one and go So me now know how it's some look come and go Cause I just you, you and I Yellow for fragrance on my room when you come back. You make me feel like a balloon into the sky. Miss me, me baby, I miss you, you and I. Me imagine your head, pop me belly in a box. Why me slap up your body like a kete jump? Me not even a fear, but no me fi make you come. Two of we both together like a baby. Oh, you're so tiffy, so I'm like we are make a song If it wet up any more, me could have set a jump She deliver it to me, it's like a letter come Till somebody said to bring a set a gun Cause I just you, you and I You live up in the summer room when you come back Okay, so we are back to working for you And we are going to go to the lines and if people have questions that they can call in, the local number is one. No, sorry, I'm getting it all confused here. The local number is 465 2555, and the overseas number is Ronnie 718 Okay, so you can call in. And if you have questions, you can shoot to your questions, comments, or suggestions. You're welcome to do so. Yeah, that's why I could have just add one thing sure. to the um, youth explosion. I think I spoke about the, the artists from overseas, Dexter Dutch. But certainly one of the things as far as Team Unity is concerned, that we have to support and promote our local artists. And so on this particular evening, there are quite a number of local artists that will be on, bands also that will be on for that particular show. So it's really going to be an evening 
of good music, great fellowship, and people enjoying themselves. Sure. And certainly, as I said, our local people will be a part of this this show also as the gospel concert here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, Ambassador, we, we have no callers on the line. Um, I think everybody understood all I was saying. I think everybody and they, understood. And they're happy. And, and, and they're happy with that. And we catered for everybody. That's correct. Maybe we left all the preschoolers, but um, that's mm -hmm. something to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, you might be surprised to know some of, you that the some of these preschoolers <laughs> even know these songs. How they learn them, I don't know. Yeah. But they're hearing them all around yeah, them. Right. Um, <clears throat> so, I think we can wrap this program up. Certainly, certainly. I think so. And I want to thank you for coming again. This is the second time around to share with us the week of activities to mark the second anniversary of the Government of National Unity. So I want to thank you. We look forward to a very um, lively uh, celebration, one where many people can participate um, in the second anniversary for the government of national unity. And, you know, we are going to be doing a lot more promotion oh, yes, of the events and yeah. so on, so that people can be aware of what is taking place and they can come and be a part of the celebrations as well. Yeah, so thank you. Is there anything just, that you just, want just, to... Just for all of us to remember that a government is not a political party. A government is a government for all the people. Whether you voted for persons who now form the government or not, at the end of the day, once there's a government in office, you know, so they didn't say in power, in office, they are working for the people. And it's wonderful that you have this program working for you. Mm -hmm. Because you is plural and includes everybody. That is you didn't say of a political party. I think this is something that we need to understand. Elections have their time. And when elections are over, somebody will win, somebody will lose. But at the end of the day, we have an interest in what is happening to our country, and so together we want to build. It's not always that we'll agree with, with each other or either side, but the point is the focus and the aim is to build and to build a better St. Kitts and Nevis. And I'm satisfied, and I'm sure most, most persons, if they're honest with themselves, would be satisfied that we have really done remarkably well in the short two-year two period. When you listen to the things that have happened to the to to us in that period of time, eliminating debt surpluses, it could go on and on and on. And so people, they think about what has happened, will certainly be satisfied that the government has been working for you. Sure. Well, Ambassador, I, I thank you so much again you too. Yeah. for appearing on this program. You have been listening to working for you. I am your host, Les Roy Williams. We are going to leave you with a song from Jonathan Nelson, and we are going to leave you with another one from Dexter Dapps. These are two international artists who will be coming for the week of activities to celebrate the second anniversary of the government of national unity in office. Jonathan Nelson is a gospel singer and songwriter, um, well renowned, and Dexter Dapps is a Jamaican dancer artist who has appealed to so many of our young people. Have a good day, and we'll see you next week. I trust